This video will introduce a rare case of caudoventral hip luxation. As pet lovers, we love to cuddle our pets, placing them on high platforms such as tables or beds. Oh no! What happened? Fortunately, this dog was not injured after the fall. However, there was a different ending to the story for another dog named Rufus. This is a Be Kind to Pet veterinary educational video sponsored by Topayo Vets. As this video contains graphic content, viewer discretion is advised. It's the 6th of August 2017. This is Rufus, a 12-year-old crossbreed between a Shih Tzu and a Maltese. Though Rufus is a healthy dog, he seems to be walking with a little difficulty. The complaint was that there was no weight put on the right hind leg. The owner reviewed that prior to this, Rufus had fallen from a bit. Rufus is now limping and dragging its right hind leg. The leg is stretched and displayed outwards. What is the reason for Rufus' walking difficulty? What exactly is Rufus' injury? How can we find out? After an x-ray was done, it was reviewed that the hip has dislocated. So, what is hip dislocation? Hip dislocation is the displacement of the femoral head, more commonly known as the ball, relative to the acetabulum, which is also known as the socket. In other words, hip dislocation is when the ball comes out of the socket in the hip. So, how do I know if my pet has a hip dislocation? Firstly, we must know the history and activity of our pets. Prior to the injury, as owners, we must consider the possible causes. Hip dislocation is usually caused by traumatic accidents such as being knocked down by a car or falling from high platforms. These traumatic accidents can cause injury to your pet. If your pet is unable to walk properly and shows signs of lameness, there could be a chance that your pet has a hip dislocation. So, the next thing you can do is to bring it to a vet. At the veterinary clinic, Vets will first perform physical examinations, checking for areas of pain, especially at the hip, by palpating it. Vets will also perform differential diagnosis, considering factors such as old age, presence of tumours, fractures, or arthritis. If hip dislocation is likely the cause of pain experienced at the hip, vets will follow up the diagnosis with x-rays. There are two types of hip dislocation, the cranial dorsal hip luxation and the caudoventral hip luxation. When comparing the length of the limb, cranial dorsal luxation will result in a shorter limb, while caudoventral luxation will result in a longer limb. Cranial dorsal hip luxation is more commonly seen. For cranial dorsal hip luxation, the femoral head is displaced forward and upwards from the acetabulum. On the other hand, caudoventral hip luxation accounts for only 5% of hip dislocations. Why is caudoventral hip luxation so rarely seen? This is because when an animal falls, the legs are usually in an upright position, landing in a position where it is standing up. The impact of this posture will put pressure on the hip joint, causing the femoral head to be pushed upwards, which will result in craniodorsal hip luxation. Caudoventral hip luxation will only happen in the unlikely event that the animal lands with its legs splayed outwards. Caudoventral hip luxation happens when the femoral head of the hip is displaced downwards away from the acetabulum. Oh no! What kinds of treatments are there? Which treatment is most suitable for my pet? There are two main types of treatment, close reduction and open reduction. However, the success rate of close reduction is only 50% while the success rate of open reduction is 90%. When the pet is brought in, the vet will first perform close reduction. This is usually in the form of manual manipulation which is the act of shifting the femoral head back into the acetabulum using hands. This is also done under anaesthetic conditions. However, remember that there is only a 50% success rate. If there are unstable joints or other orthopedic conditions, or if avulsion fractures the femoral head and there's a risk of recurrence after close reduction, open reduction will be needed. The main advantage of close reduction treatment is that it is less expensive. However, there is only a 50% chance that it will work. But what if you're one of those less fortunate 50% that close reduction treatment will not cure? Then, 
open reduction is needed. Open reduction involves surgical treatment of the hip dislocation. There are many different types of surgical repairs such as femoral head ostectomy and total hip replacement. The decision of what type of surgical repair is subject to the individual characteristics of the pet, such as skeletal maturity and age, as well as to the decision of the surgeon. For Rufus, open reduction was required. Rufus was suffering from a caudal-ventral hip luxation. Caudal-ventral hip luxation happens when the femoral head of the hip is displaced downwards away from the acetabulum. For this Maltese, the right femoral head is ventrally dislocated from the acetabulum or the socket. Here is the ventral dorsal x-ray view of the dog. The orange arrow indicates the position of the dislocation. A case of caudal-ventral hip luxation will cause the luxated leg to be longer than usual upon extension. For Rufus, femoral head ostectomy was performed. Femoral head ostectomy is the process by which the head of the femur is surgically removed. In other words, it is the removal of the ball from the ball and socket that makes up the hip joint. This is the process of femoral head ostectomy. Firstly, the femoral head is cut off. Next, the edges of the femoral neck are filed and smoothened. Once that is done, the muscles that were cut are closed with a row of continuous sutures. Since the femoral head is now removed, a false joint is created in place of the femoral head. The success rate of open reduction is 90%, and surgical treatment such as femoral head ostectomy usually give near normal functions in small breeds and non obese dogs after surgery. However, the downside is that femoral head ostectomy is an expensive and specialized surgery, which some may not be able to afford. So, was the surgery a success? Did it work? Yes! It's the 9th of August, National Day 2017. This is Rufus on day 3 of his recovery. He is now able to walk a little, unlike day 1 and 2 where he was totally unable to walk. He is able to bear weight on his right hind leg, which was previously dislocated at the hip. After the surgery, Rufus' right hind leg is back in its normal upright position. The patch on Rufus' upper body is to contain the painkillers while at the lower body, we can see some stitches from the femoral head ostectomy. Here is Rufus on day 6 of his recovery. He is now able to walk a lot more, bearing more weight on his right hind leg. Given approximately 4 more weeks, Rufus should be able to walk normally. We hope that Rufus will recover well. Here are some cases of craniodorsal hip luxation. This is a one-year-old female border collie that was brought to BioVet on 5th August 2015. On that same morning, the border collie fell into a drain, injuring its right hind leg. Its right hind leg is lifted off the ground, unable to bear any weight. The x-rays show that the femoral head was displaced forward and upwards, out of the hip joint. As the dislocation was serious, the leg could not be placed on the ground at all. Craniodorsal hip luxation will result in the position of the luxated leg to be forward and beneath the body with the external rotation of the stifle, causing it to have a shorter limb. Here is another case of craniodorsal hip luxation with a successful close reduction treatment. Let's call the cat Garfield. Garfield is a 3-year-old male cat that was lost and found. However, when he was found, the owner realised that Garfield was lame. The x-ray showed that Garfield had a craniodorsal hip luxation of the left hip, as indicated by the blue arrow. From this ventral dorsal view, we can see that the femoral head has been displaced upward and forward from the acetabulum. Fortunately for Garfield, close reduction was enough to put him back into good shape. After manual manipulation, the luxated left hind leg was placed in an ammo sling. The ammo sling was designed to maintain the position of the femoral head in the acetabulum, helping the dislocated hip to remain in a normal position. It prevents weight bearing and limits the hip motion during the period of recovery, which is about 2 weeks. But what if I decide not to bring my pet for treatment? What's the worst thing that can happen to my pet? Can my pet die due to hip dislocation? The answer is no. Hip dislocation will just cause discomfort and extreme pain to the pet, as well as leave the pet unable to walk or limp. However, one should still bring a pet for a proper diagnosis at the vet. In conclusion, we have learned that cases of caudal ventral hip luxation are much rarer than craniodorsal hip luxation. 
and that there are two different kinds of treatment, closed reduction and open reduction. Here is some advice to allow you to become a better pet owner. Firstly, always be aware of your pet's activities. Keep a close eye on them and refrain from carrying them to high platforms such as on tables or beds. This will ensure that your pet will not risk a hip dislocation by falling down. Secondly, it is good to bring your pet to a vet early. Early diagnosis and treatment will prevent more harm to your pet. If your pet continues to live on with its injury, it might suffer from sores and infections, making it more detrimental to its health.